Hi, and welcome back. Um, as you may recall from the last episode, um, Dari had disappeared in a circle of mushrooms um, during the arena fight. And we are going to uh, cut to what happened on that side of the fence. Um, so let's go ahead and bring in uh, Dari's player, Jay. Uh, welcome. Um, Alright, uh, so um, you are... It, it's evening. Um, you guys have just watched the cage. Um, doors creak open and slam into the muddy area of the pit. There was skittering um, and some kind of flashing, thrumming orange and yellow light as this humongous, fiendish scorpion started skittering out after being prodded um, towards your companions and you. Um, you were standing behind, but were ready to prepare a spell and get into it um, when you started to hear the softest music. Um, very kind of lyrical and really kind of on the wind. It's strange because you also hear the shouts and yells from the people sitting around the pit. Because um, if you remember, it's you were doing the monster mash and there's a huge audience all clamoring to see the scorpion dead, you dead, or both. Um, many of them having bets on one or the other. But you hear the music. Um, looking around, you see that from the mud at your feet, Small toadstools and mushrooms have spread around you in a circle about four feet wide, five feet wide. Um, the mushrooms are strange, especially for this climate, but you recognize some of them um, to be the types of mushrooms you would see in the forests when you were younger in Thrain. Um, and between one breath and the next, you're no longer in the pit. Um, Dari is kind of sitting in an open glade that's filled with grass. Um, you're on a hilltop, and the same circle of mushrooms surrounds you. Um, but looking out, you can see mostly fog, with a few jagged mountain tops sticking up out of the fog in the distance. Um, off to your right, just about 10 feet away, is almost a tunnel in the fog, where you can see a grass path going down into the fog and out of view. Um, you hear, or give me a perception check. Okay. So that's a d20 plus perception, which is a skill. Sixteen. Wait. Yeah, sixteen. Um, you, yeah, you hear what sounds like small laughter. Not quite childlike, but um, still seemingly innocent um, as it um, kind of echoes off the fog and the surroundings, which don't seem like anything, um, but it's hard to discern our direction. And then you hear a gravelly voice, a voice that you remember from years ago, a voice that set you on the right path. Come closer, child. And that is coming from the past. It's the voice of one of your oldest friends. The friend that would talk to you from the forest and help you find a place that you could call home, find a center in yourself. Um, when nobody else would play with you. Dari gets up from her from where she was sitting in shock. Okay. And for a moment examines the glade around her before her attention quickly turns towards the tunnel. As um, Dari stands up, kind of brushes herself off, she notices everything here is larger. Um, she's much closer to the ground. Her arms aren't as long, and she's wearing what looks like a small frock made of simple materials. Um, the type that um, a farmer and a farmer's wife might make for their child who is growing way too fast. Um, and you can see that you, you're wearing strappy shoes, um, that you 
distinctly remember from when you were much younger. You are, in fact, probably about seven or eight right now. You are much shorter, a little chubbier, and your horns are much smaller. Much more nubby. Yeah. Your tail only wraps around to about the knee right now. Your gear, your staff, your mace, your new mace, they're all gone. Although something inside Dari tells her to look for her things, despite everything else, she decides to head start towards the tunnel. Okay. Um, as you start to make your way into the fog-like tunnel, familiar scents. You can smell, you can hear, um, the, the, the sounds of a babbling brook, the rushing of leaves on the wind as they scrape the ground in the autumn. You smell some kind of roasted baked goods, maybe bread or some kind of pie. Um, smells and sounds that you remember from your childhood all those years ago. Before the silver, before the silver flame brought you out this far, long before. As you start making your way in this tunnel of fog, you get closer to the bottom of the hill. You can tell as the angle is not as steep, um, but it's almost like you've walked this path before. None of these steps are unfamiliar to you. None of these. Um, all of the small outcroppings and rocks that stick up after the hill, it's like you know they're there before you step on them. Um, and as you make your way down, the fog kind of opens up into this glade, this relatively medium size, like not, not quite huge, but about the size of a, of a house, um, opening in the forest. And you can see large trees, mostly birch and ash, uh, the same trees around your farm at home, um, and the clearing itself, you, you recognize almost immediately. Um, usually, it wasn't day as it is now, although you left at night, if you remember. Um, not really during the day, but the times that you would sneak off into the forest were usually at night, when you would meet with your friend. Um, your friend who told you his name when you were younger was Zoff. Z-O-F-F. Zoff. There won't be a test, but it is information you should probably have. Of course we know it's... Z-O-F-F. Um, as you make your way into this clearing, I would like you to make a perception check when you are ready. Can I just put on the graph paper? You can do whatever you want. I put those papers in there so that you would have area to make notes and maps and whatever you want. Alright, perception check. 18. Wow. Um, you easily pick out the sm smooth stones. Um, seemingly discarded in this area, but they're just a little bit too smooth to be normal stones. And as you are making your way down the hill, looking out at this clearing, you can see that they all kind of spiral to a mound in the center. Um, you remember Zoth as kind of a um, speaking like, um, almost, uh, almost like a fist-sized globe of light. But he had a very distinct voice. And you hear that voice now that says, Welcome, Dari. I'm glad to see you after so long apart. And then you hear the throaty chuckle <laughs> that you remember fairly well. Um, part of why you remember as well as you do is because the deep, gravelly voice was not something that you would have expected from something as beautiful as this ball of light when you were a child. And as you are kind of looking around the clearing, looking for this ball of light, the mound itself starts to move. Um, it, it's a hillock 
of brass and stones that at, at first you thought maybe it was um, just kind of a, a pile of brass. But it starts to move, and as it pushes itself from the ground and begins to stand up, you can see it has three heavy legs made of earth and stone. And it itself is a giant shambling mass of grass and limbs, dirt and mud. And it turns its massive form around towards you. And you can see it has many eyes. All of them being small, white lights. Similar to what you remember as a child. But this, these are facets inside the face of this gigantic shambling man. Do not fear, little one. Dari does not have a single sense of fear in her right now. She recognizes this person as off. This creature as the old friend from her childhood. She shakes off whatever insecurity she had or worry she had before and takes a step towards the creature. Greetings, old friend. It sure has been a while. Yes. There are those that would not wish us to speak. They have put up barriers between your world and mine. But I want to remedy that. What do you mean? Well, when you were a child, there were lands I could visit upon the areas of your existence. Dreams and certain places that were close to the magic of my world. And those ways have been shut. But I seek to reopen them. And I think I can with you, old friend. Of course. I, why would they even close you off? Well, um, many, many of the peoples of Eberron and um, the Believers, they think that evils can seep in through the cracks of dreams. And so they shut the doors and shut the windows and they don't let in the air. Well, that's just not healthy. No, it isn't. <laughs> Some just don't know what's good for them. I, I have a favor to ask. Yes? Well, um, as I was a friend to you in some hard times, I need you to be a friend to me in these hard times. Uh, give me another perception check. Uh, Fourteen. Wow. Um, as she is kind of moving slowly, um, you can see he's not standing still. It's not standing still. It's a giant shambling now. But um, it's moving still and as it's moving large chunks of rock and grass and stone from its body are collapsing to the ground it's kind of easy to see because you are very small and standing in front of it um but you can see that its form while immediately it was kind of intimidating and imposing and huge it is starting to slim down you also see that the bright green of the grass is already starting to yellow and dry There are seeds like these, and um, give me an give me a reflex, uh, a dexterity saving throw. So it's from the second list over. No, no, you right. No, no, yeah. Yes. Yep. Second list. Dexterity saving throw. No, up, up, up. Put your finger down. That list right there. Where does it say dexterity? One. Okay, so plus one. Nineteen. <laughs> you should roll this well when we're actually in your group. Um, you, uh, he says, like these, and before you know what's happening, something dislodges itself from Zoth. 
and it jumps at you and it's kind of flying straight at you. It looks like a dirt ball covered in short fibrous grass as it flings straight at you. For a fraction of a second you think, did Zoth just throw something at me? And then you realize it's a creature. And as it's getting closer to you, you can see that it almost resembles... Actually, give me a nature check. Oh no. Oh no. Three. Um, you're not entirely sure what to make of this creature, but it's small. It has two arms, two legs, and a fairly long tail. It has a mouth that opens, and um, you can see it's filled with razor, no, uh, not razor sharp, but what look like broken stones for teeth. Um, and in between its arms and legs, it has these kind of flaps that are allowing it to glide right towards you. Um, Can I reach up and grab it? So, if for a split second you think he threw something at you, and then you realize it's a creature that's kind of flung itself at you, and with that dexterity save, you absolutely grab it. And it screeches at you with kind of a loud, piercing animal screech, scrambles out of your hands, runs around your head and down your shoulder, and sits on the ground, and it's holding up in its tiny, monkey-like hand three, for better or worse, seeds. Um, they look like stone fruit pits, so like peach pits. Um, they're hard, and they almost look like wood because they're of how their the the material is they're made of. But they're about the size of um, like a, a D battery, a size D battery. So they're not small. And as the this monkey thing is handing them to you, you can see that as you reach for them, you're back to your adult self. Your mace is hanging from your side, you're back in your armor, um, and these batteries, while large, aren't too much for you. They might have been, not batteries, these seeds um, are large, but you can easily handle them. And you now have three of these seeds in your hand. You can feel the thrum of some kind of magical energy in them as you palm, as you, as they're sitting in your hand. I need you to plant these where you feel they will be best, they will have the best chance of growing to further close the gap between my world and yours. The land of dreams should be closer. Yes. I will. I will make sure they have the best places to thrive. Thank you, child. I, I trust that when my world and your world are but a breath apart, things will change for all of us. For the better. For the better. Um, now, and as he's still talking to you, you can see more of him has fallen. And now he's almost a, just kind of like a skeleton of dirt and stone with just little patches of dried white and yellow grass. Most of what was his frame is laying in a heap underneath him as he's been falling apart. His eyes, though, are still bright white. You can see that while he did have three legs before, now he has ten, because each of the larger legs had a bunch of smaller points of legs within them. <clears throat> Do you have anything you need of me? I... I need to return. You don't want to stay here with me? Of course I want to stay here with I you. I prepared a meal as we once did when you were much younger. You have? Yes, of course, child. 
I wouldn't want you to be hungry. And you can see that several of his eyes blink out white, blink out and then blink back as if he was like <laughs> winking or something. <laughs> and um, as if on cue, the winds, and you hear that rushing of the leaves again, and they blow from another part of the clearing. And as they blow past you, you can see that the grass and the dirt grows and creates almost like a dais or a table. And on it are a bunch of different fruits and vegetables. Many of them you thought you had dreamed because you haven't seen them in your world. You've only seen them in the land of dreams where Zoth is from. Um, give me a history check. Okay. Um, these, you, nothing, you don't recognize anything strange or anything about these fruits and vegetables. Um, but you do find that you are a little hungry. You've been out a lot, a long time today, and you're not sure if it's because you were a child and then an adult or what, but you are a little hungry. Then I think I shall stay for. Good. Good. Um, to help your efforts, um, if you do not mind, I am going to send my friend with you. All right. You hear him whistle something, which kind of sounds like wind whipping through a willow tree, and the small creature goes <coughs> and crawls up again, up your arm, <laughs> and then hisses at you. And then jumps off and goes and starts filling its mouth with some of the fruits and vegetables. It looks like a monkey mixed with some kind of small demon. and But it's made out of grass and dirt and stone and wood. Um, and it has, where it has, like for eyes, it has small pinpoints really deep of onyx like black shiny rock but they're way deep in his eye sockets um and uh like i said he has skin flaps between his front arms and back legs that allow him to it seems like he can glide with them. like like a, like glide yep um and he is stuffing his face with what looks like some kind of purple peach <laughs> And as you turn to the table and look at the food, you see that Zoth is gone. Once more, he's a collapsed pile in the center of the um, breezeway. And you can see off in the distance, above the trees, 15 white lights, white orbs that are floating off in the distance. As you pick up a piece of fruit, um, you um, look around. And you are once again standing in the arena, the pit. Um, you have, in your left hand, you have the three seeds. In the right hand, you have a slice of what looks like some kind of large tomato, maybe. Um, and it's completely dark. Uh, the fog has settled, has come in and settled over the entire town as, as it has most quiet. You can still hear some celebrations and drinking and singing far off. Um, but all of Merchant's Row in the town of Semblance has been closed. Nobody is out here at the pit. Um, you see that the cage that had the, the scorpion has gone completely. Um, and there's no one here. Um, in the distance, though, you do hear what sounds like footsteps, scraping footsteps, um, and they are making their way toward the pit, it would seem. Like, uh, sitting just behind you, and a little bit to your right, is the small monkey-type creature. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't look to be made of, um, dirt and stone and, um, wood and grass. 
Um, it seems to be a flesh and blood creature now, um, but its fur is still the kind of deep, bright green of fresh grass. Um, but it, it looks now like a flesh and blood creature. Dari is going to carefully put the seeds somewhere safe. Okay. In a special pouch or such, because she does not know if these footsteps are people who are trustworthy or not. All right. Then she's going to turn into the creature, to, towards the creature. Okay. Turn towards the sound? The, the, the creature. Oh, the creature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's going to reach down, offering her arm for it to climb up. G- give me an animal handling check. 20. Um, it re- moves out and sniffs, and then also hearing the sounds coming from not far off to the east, it looks at th- towards the sound and then climbs up your arm and settles somewhere back here. She, she pets it a little bit before turning towards the sound and trying to figure out how far away or who, who this is. So give me a perception check with disadvantage. So that means roll twice and take the lowest of the two rolls. Eight. Eight, okay. Um, as you, uh, as Dari kind of is looking around trying to focus on where the sound is coming from, um, I- I'm going to paint the picture of what the pit looks like again really quick. Uh, you are near the center of the pit. It is a fairly large pit. It has three feet about of, um, no, more like five feet of uh, wall. And then it's dug down into the ground about two feet from the rest of the, of the ground. So in order to get out, you would have to either go to the exit, which right now is where the um, cage was, which is a little bit away, um, or ju- climb up five feet over the fence to get on the outside. Once you're on the outside, there's a whole bunch of wooden um, benches that have been set up with breaks here and there to so that people can get out um but that's what you're kind of sitting at and you are not sure where the scraping sound is coming from other than the fact that it's coming from the east and it's echoing pretty badly dari is going to start making her way towards the exit because it appears that <coughs> that climbing the wall when there's clearly an are exit. you doing it quietly you're trying to do it stealthily Trying to do it stealthily, yes. Okay, give me a stealth check. Watch your mouth. Language. Sorry. <laughs> Three. Three? <laughs> um, you make your way, you start making your way um, towards the back, but you're also wearing full armor. Uh, as you are kind of making your way that way, the, the creature is screeching and kind of hissing. This is not a familiar territory for it, and it's um, making quite a bit of racket. Uh, and you make your way to where the opening is for the pit, um, and ki- and that's to the north and kind of west. And so you make your way out, um, and the scraping sound is is closer, and it seems there's more than one. Whatever it is, is more than a few. Dari attempt to exit. Like oh, yeah, you're you're outside of it. Okay. Yeah, you're outside the pit. You step up into the. Right now you're in the bleachers, essentially. Can I get out of the bleachers and into the street, basically? Sure. Do you want to be visible? Are you trying to be visible? I'm not trying to be visible. I'm trying to get out. Well, okay. Um. So right now there are streets that lead to the pit, but the pit is like at a crossroads. Okay. So I didn't know if like the pit was like. The pit itself was the thing that was low, and then there was bleachers going up. So the pit is lower. The bleachers have been set up, but they're up. So the ground level, you're here. This is the ground level. The bleachers go up like this, and then there's an alleyway to exit the bleachers. Yes, she's going to go down the alleyway to okay. exit the bleachers. Um, so you go down the alleyway, and um, you're back in Merchant's Row, because that's Merchant's Row goes north and south of it. The road that goes east and west is the road that will 
If you go west, it will take you to the um, river. If you go east, it will take you um, back out and kind of north a little bit out of the town. And it seems that something is going... Sorry, flip that. East is heading... If you keep going east, you'll head out towards town. So whatever is, is coming, it's going... It seems like it's going to go around the pit. And it's either looking for you or something, or it's going to head out of town. Uh, is th so it's all closed down, right? There's no more stalls, or are the stalls still set up? But stalls, just stalls are still set up, but there's no there's nothing out. Merchants have passed away their goods. You can hear the kind of lightly snoring. Some some there are some people that were out partying and um, drinking and stuff, and so they just pass out wherever. And then some of the merchants stay at their small areas they've rented to be their stores as well to make sure nobody steals their stuff. Can Dari move behind something to... Can, can I try to get a better look at what is coming my direction? Sure. Um, go ahead and give me a... Uh, what, tell me what you're going to do. Where are you hiding? Dari wants to hide behind a stall. Okay. So you're going to move closer to that road, but move behind the stall. Okay, 20. Um, she feels fairly confident um, as she pulls herself around and... Wait, was and that a perception check or a stealth check? Stealth check. Oh and quiets the It's 18 monkey. then. Well, that's fine. 18 is still good. And quiets the monkey on her shoulder um, to uh, so that she can stealth a little bit better as she peeks out. And give me a perception check. 21. Um, you see, uh, coming from west to east, um, is what seems like many thorns walking in the fog. Uh, they are white in color um, and thin, rail thin. Um, and as they are moving, you can see some of them are dragging a foot or dragging a weapon behind them. Skeletons. Um, probably nine or ten of them. Um, and probably nine or ten of them, and um, one of the skeletons is a little bit larger than the others, and is red, like deep red, as in probably, it looks like it's still bloody. Um, and walking behind is a larger form, um, about the same size as Grokshard, maybe even a little bit bigger than Grokshard, um, in dark, uh, dark cloak and dark robes, walking with a staff, and every time he hits the staff on the ground, the skeletons take another step. So he is, it seems that he's keeping, um, things in pace. Dari, albeit a bit suspicious of the skeletons, decides to shake it off and assume, you know what? They're most likely being kept in line, hopefully. Okay. And we'll start heading eastward, coming out of her hiding spot. Also keep in mind, the Silver Flame does not like the undead. At all. I know, I am very, I don't want... Okay. No, you know what? No, hold on. You are also in the country that use undead as soldiers, maids, butlers, servants. <laughs> so... I'm just you know what? How about Dari just stays in her little spot for now? Okay. Um, sure enough, as you had planned, the skeletons move close to you and um, start walking by you. And the as as they move by you, the one that is caked in now you can tell it's caked in gore. It's a slightly larger skeleton. Um, give me a nature check. Eighteen. Um, it looks like it might have been the skeleton of like maybe an orc. Like a, a full orc, because it's pretty big. Um, it stops and seems to look directly at you before moving on. 
and um, as you as they move past you, the larger frame of the person in the black robes, the dark robes, dark green robes, chuckles softly to himself as he walks past you as well. And assuming you don't do anything, they keep walking and disappear into the fog. Dari's going to try and trail them, make sure they're... they're... Okay. So give me another stealth check. I need you to speak a little louder. Thirteen. Thirteen. And the survival check. The stealth check is to see how well you, you're you hiding. The survival check is to see how well you track them. Nineteen. Yeah, you didn't need much. They're a small horde of skeletons. Um, you pretty easily followed them. The, they, they go. You're pretty sure that they saw you following them, but they don't seem to care. As they follow the road that comes back around town and heads north. Out of town? Out of town. Yeah. Dari stops. Because she knows that attacking this group of people will most likely be, be this group of undead will most likely be a big no no to the to this group, this culture of people. Okay. So she stops striking them as soon as she's sure they're heading out of town. Okay. Cool. Um, you know that uh, you can kind of get a feeling that it's pretty late at night. Um, if your friend, assuming your friend survived the fight, um, they probably went back to the inn by this point. I should probably go check if my friends are still alive. Probably, yeah. Um, you start making your way back to the Wayward Inn, um, to the Wayward Inn, and, um, as you make your way back, um, you can hear, like I said, laughter from some of the areas, because there's a lot of actors and merchants and people, visitors that had come into town for the celebrations, right? And they are still celebrating even though it's probably er pretty early morning at this point. Um, and you, get your, you make your way back to the inn, and you find the door locked, which you guys have been staying here for three weeks, and um, it's never been locked, ever. Even four in the morning, it's not locked. But you said locked. that skeleton was no. of an arc, right? It was what? It was an of, an of an arc. Yep. Can I please make a check to see if that orc had one arm? Uh, give me an intelligence check to see if you remember. Apparent not eight. A lot has happened, and it was kind of dark while it was walking, and there was a lot of gore still hanging from the skeletons, so you don't quite remember if it had one arm or two. There's no lights on in there, correct? Um, give me a perception check as you kind of step back to look at all of the windows. Um, you kind of make your way around back, and you see that most of the lights are off, but you see maybe a flickering candle at one of the windows at the back. Um, can, can she go up and knock on the door? Sure. You want to knock on the front door or the back door? The front door. Uh, are you knocking loud or quiet? I'm not quiet at first. Try, just enough to get someone's attention. Um, it takes a little bit, um, but after a bit, uh, after maybe six or seven minutes, um, Pat, the woman at the inn who pretty much takes care of everything, um, opens the door, you can see her face is, you know, very white from fear, and she's got, her, she, her eyes are very wet, and she's wearing a, a long night shirt, um, but you can see that she's pretty disheveled. Um, and she says, oh, they, they said you disappeared. We had thought the worst. We had thought the worst. And that's where we're going to stop uh, this um, shorter episode just to catch you up with where everyone else is. Um, 
So I want to thank you for joining us today um, in this uh, sh shorter episode. Um, I hope to see you all next week. I hope you had an excellent Halloween. Um, and remember, when it comes to gaming, I just felt like rolling. Closer than ever, ever than before My life is wasted if I can't spend it all with you I've lived in total darkness, now you're my only light When you're away I feel like a shadow No, I...